Today we are going to show you what is a zebra stone. We've got these really cool rocks. They're not found anywhere else in the world. And scientists come from all over the world to see them because they think they're a fraud if they can come. They think they're just like the platypus. The platypus went overseas. They thought it was a con job. It's the same with these rocks. The pattern is perfect. Scientists reckon that it has to have been man-made. These rocks are 1.2 billion years old. They are not found anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And they are certainly not man-made. But you have to be a little bit careful. The zebra stone is so rare. The really the real stuff, so many people can take advantage of you nowadays. Now this is a really, really cute little elephant, but he's not a zebra. That's a sedimentary rock. One of the most common rocks in the world is different flood event layers on top of each other. Looks absolutely gorgeous as an elephant, but not as a zebra. That's a zebra. So what makes them so unique is the patterning. The pattern's perfect. Check out how perfect that line divided in two reorganize itself on the other side with an extra line. You try doing that, that's really difficult and the pattern's perfect. As a big piece, that's what it looks like. No, it's amazing to see it as a big piece. As a big piece looks incredible, yeah. Yeah, so they don't, we don't have massive megatons where that big piece came from. It's about the size of a wheelbarrow. Yeah, so we're always out there looking for more of it. This one's our rarest. I wish I had 300 ton, but I do not. I have one piece. You can feel the weight of the iron and you can actually feel the difference in the density across the front. The iron is a heavier, thicker material and it's caused and formed an organised patterning. All about the iron. So what's happened to create them? There's all sorts of different ideas. If we had two scientists, we'd have two different ideas. But we love this idea from physicists at Monash University down in Melbourne. They reckon they're bubbles. I reckon they look like bubbles too. Yeah. Bubbles have never ever formed inside a solid. The rock's been a fluid under volcanic heat and pressure, most likely. The best idea to have in your mind right now is a lava lamp. The rock got hot and the iron's melted and it's pushing through a lot of material there. Difference in density, oil and water, you've got your iron floating around. But extraordinary, something's organised the iron into the lines. You can imagine with compression, you're going to get your lines forming. Iron is organised. What do you reckon is going to do that? Magnetic event. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Something magnetic is going to do that. Now, what kind of magnetic event? This rock is 1.2 billion years old, and we're just little human beings who've been on the planet for five minutes. Our imagination's not that large. We don't actually know. This is a really no. good guess at this stage. But the best guess, maybe, Australia was down at the magnetic yeah. south pole for hundreds of millions of years. Uh, it might have been. It's very possible, isn't it? Yeah. South Pole. This piece here is regarded as the best example in the world. It looks like melted chocolate. I reckon the whole pattern is moving under as a magnetic event. <laughs> you can see this come from two. It's come from two meters deep. That's the same thickness, and it's actually melted to the base rock in this example. So we love the little pieces of zebra stone, but when you see it as a big piece, that's when you really realise how special this pattern is. So it's absolutely extraordinary as a big piece. Amazing to see. So our biggest problem is there's not massive megatons. It's not a never ending supply. Hopefully we're wise enough to realize this now. Things are finite. So the first deposit, it's already been mined. You guys could have found it. It was found out on Argyle Gas Cattle Station. You could take the Toyota out there and load on up. That was prior to 1974. It did go underwater with Lake Argyle and a couple of islands remained. They have been mined out and they've been sold through businesses in Kununurra. The main business has certainly closed. It's small deposits only. It's not a never ending supply. So we're just really, really lucky that we have Crazy Kim. He's a fantastic bloke. Grew up on the stock camp on Argyle. He loved his rock and never stopped looking for more of it. So it's taken him 15 years to find in the territory. It's a big hats off being able to pull that off. Massive effort. Took him another 15 years to find me. Together we picked the mining lease in June 2009. We've sold everything we own to find out mining lease equipment, exploration gear, D9H dozer, excavator, you name it. We do have it. We don't go on holidays, we go mining and mine security. That's all expensive. And we've got multiple sites, but they are small. We are constantly mining them out. We initially wholesaled our rock. It was sent overseas and carved to X rocks, crocodiles, buffaloes and pigs. It could have been commercialised very quickly. We could have mined it all out in three months and gone and be doing something else now. But you've got to love Kim. He said no. If you need to buy it as an egg of rubber or a crocodile, you probably miss the point. These rocks are special exactly how they are. They actually don't need to be made into anything. They look beautiful how they naturally are. So we've decided to do it the long hard way. 
open up direct to the public and we'd love to chat to everyone about it. Happy to talk to you guys 365 days of the year then talk to the wholesaler once. Everyone gets a unique piece and you pass it down through your family, we're gonna run out too. There's not much of it around. So we're already looking at fabric printing, sarongs, scarves, board shots. Some of these patterns are spectacular and we wanna make sure that they stay around forever. We've got this amazing country. We're the oldest in the world. People come from all over the world to see us, but many of our natural features, we just drive straight past. We actually don't realize how incredible this country is. We're a living museum from top to toe and we need to be doing more to look after it. We can dig it all up overseas, but what have we left for anyone else? Not much. So, um, our end game, we'd actually really love to be able to take you guys out and show it to you in the ground. We don't want to mine all of it. Our best example, it should be left for tourism and left for everyone, for every generation to come. Every Aussie that comes up into the top end, they should be able to go and see it. Yeah, not just one generation. So, we love it when you guys come on in to see us. We love it when you spend five minutes to learn a little bit more about the rock. We're only too happy to show you how to polish up your own pieces and tell you more. There's a fantastic display in here. We love it when you take your own photography. We don't actually have a website, so we're happy when you take your own photos. It's all about loving the rock just as much as what we do. Um, and we're only just getting started here. We're a brand new business. It's all recycled materials. We've built it off of uh, the pandemic. And we've only been open here for two years. So since then, I've been absolutely amazed at our number one question. It's, is there any magical healing powers? Right, everyone wants to know. Everyone does, yeah. What's the magic? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So it's all right. We've got the answer. Hopefully A will see that this little collection here. There's three little smiley faces for you. All right, how does that make you feel? Happy. Very positive. Happy. <laughs> yeah. positive energy. Yeah, so thank you very, very much for coming in today and learning a little bit more about your ups. Thank you.